I think Bitcoin is truly different than all of the crypto coins. Uh, dude, uh, Bitcoin is different than everything. Not just, it's fucking different than everything. It, the closest thing that I can come to Bitcoin is you, the unique human nature of one individual. There's never going to be another cat like that. Him, him, like it's finite. There's only one and ain't going to be copied. Okay, like, wow. Seriously, dude, that's monster. And that's before we get to blockchain. So no time in history, I, I still cannot find a finite product that can't be accelerated through price, accelerated in production. Uh, you know, if I wanted to get here faster and risk a couple of hundred dollar tickets, I probably could have, right? So these other, these other things, I, 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 like everything, like gold, this is far superior to gold, man. So how do you just play? Just because it's a finite amount, 21 million coins ever produced? Well, it's not only a finite amount, but you can't accelerate it. Like the mining of it? Yeah, you cannot accelerate. Like you can't just print more Bitcoin like the fucking I mean, US So for your audience, let's think about this. Let's say this yeah. is, a, this is a, a, a hole in the ground, and, and uh, the price of crude oil right now is $72. You know, I can't make any money at 72 bucks. This is just the very bottom of the reservoir. I, I have to jam shit down there to get this stuff to come up. Okay, I'm going to have to put a bunch of pressure in there. Hey, price goes to 120. It's like, oh. We're going to war. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're going to put so much pressure into this thing, and we're going to squeeze out this extra stuff, okay? This never will happen on Bitcoin. Ever, 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 ever. It is literally 900 today, 900 tomorrow. 900 the following day, and then in April, 425, four years for it, 212, and four years for it, 106. So it's actually decelerating. It's decelerating, okay? That's how you got 19 million in the first 15 years, because most of it came forward. He was very smart, dude. Who the fuck is this guy? It doesn't matter. I think it's good we don't know. Satoshi? Gary's like, you know what they say? Yeah, but awesome. I can't. What blows my mind is that nobody's ever traced it. No one has an idea. Like, it's just the most. Oh, well, they traced it. No, we know, we know where the wallet is. I mean, it's, you can't do anything on chain that, that cannot be back end into. Um, I mean, you know the wallet's there. You're, you're going to know if it ever so goes out. So this guy was just like a genius that's like, I have a way to completely revolutionize money and currency. Or it was a CIA operative. But, 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 yeah, what if it was just a government but, but, agent? But make sure, okay, make sure you understand, this was in process since the 50s. See, this is the, the, the horrible part of the marketing of uh, Bitcoin, is that everybody thinks this just popped up in 2008. And they've been working on, they, people have been working on moving money into some type of digital methodology. This is not like all brand new, just like AI. They started AI in 52. So now we're all talking about Grox like, yeah, dude, it's been going on for like <laughs> 70 years. I mean, yeah. this is not the beginning of the party. This is, there are a tremendous amount of false, false starts that have started. So I, I, I don't know an asset class, you can't move forward. I get to choose to hold it in my own custody or outsource it. Um, I mean, I think it would be a horrible product if you made people self-custody. It's open for everybody to do whatever. People that are going to be in the ETF are not going to hold Bitcoin. People in family offices are not going to hold Bitcoin. You guys are all fucking confused. Okay? It's just not the way someone's going to deploy $50 million. And, 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 and Michael Saylor... Michael Saylor wouldn't be able to hold Bitcoin in his own custody for MicroStrategy if he wanted to. Why is he's that? got debt, man. Mm. Okay? He's got debt at 0%. The bank's not going to just let him hold his own coins. <laughs> like, would you do that? He, he got a billion dollars at near 0% interest. Anytime you have any kind of other party involved, no, dude, you need to keep him over here. The debt's going to service this. I mean, you just can't. They're a public company. Uh, let's see, would, would you think, would you invest in General Electric if they put $10 billion in cash in their Detroit corporate head office and, this, and the, the finance department could go in there anytime and go, hey, I think no I'll way. take a half a million. Well, that's no. Bitcoin. 
You're going to give one guy keys? No, you can't do that. So, so it's just not real that the so vast majority. So I'm trying to understand, like Michael Saylor doesn't custody it for his sake or because someone else isn't letting him? I'm like, talking about Michael Saylor's investment through MicroStrategy, right. a company, a public company. Like, what board's going to let somebody, hey, Michael owns the keys. What if Michael gets killed on his airplane? Yeah. Okay. So why, but why wouldn't he just, oh, so you're saying he didn't have the funds to buy that much on his own, so he had to go through his oh, No, 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 no. no he, he started buying, and then he leveraged. He started right. selling stock. Right. I'm just saying he has, he has done a lot of things with his corporate paper that would, one, as long as the third party's involved, they're not going to just let him store right. Bitcoin on a separate balance yeah. sheet they don't have access so to. So you're saying that's the, the huge thing with Bitcoin is people can actually self-custody it, unlike it's, other assets. It's a good thing. I don't think it's where the, all the adoption is going to come. It's yeah. an awesome option yeah. for those people that feel secure enough to, and responsible enough to hold their own coins. Uh, I think there are very few. And I don't know anybody that's going to do large, large wedges and walk around with fifty million dollars in their head <laughs> into like the New Mexico. Card, yeah. Okay, like yeah. I, I don't believe that's going to happen. I do believe that I probably have something in my pocket right now that has some fuck off money in <laughs> case somebody tries to fuck with me. Uh, but that's probably not my entire portfolio, right? That's to me, and that's what I hear sometimes from the crypto guys, and maybe it's just the messaging is not articulate, but hey, you got to self-custody. Well, like on that, a ledger or whatever. Like, dude, does that mean I have to self-custody everything? Hmm. Like, oh, and if I am self I don't self-custody my house. Hmm. I don't self-custody all that cash or the real estate. God, am I really going to get fucked? I'm, I'm not self-custodying anything. I'm, I'm just a plebe on the planet. <laughs> Nobody self-custodies much yeah. of anything. Right? It allows the world to flow faster. Um, so what, There's not just one way to play. If you're not doing self-custody, where's, who's holding it? Just to give context. I think people have to figure that out. I mean, I, um, I think for most people, um, look, I think people have to figure that out. I, I'm not a big, uh, I'll get in trouble with a bunch of purists. If you want to go through on Coinbase, I personally, okay, I think a lot of people are going to do that. First off, Coinbase has been blessed, man. They have been anointed as the winner. Yeah. And we started this conversation, okay, regulators decide who the winners are. They decided. Oh, they have already decided, mm. okay? I actually think Binance is going to be a safe place to put your money at some point because they have been maybe not anointed, but whatever deal was done, uh, they will have, the government will now have every trade that's ever happened on Binance available to them to see. And if I have done something illegal, I'd be shit in my pants right now. <laughs> like anybody out there that's been doing some crazy shit, you, you try to rationalize to me that's legit, dude, I'd be so nervous. Because they, I mean, I can assure you they know. The question's going to be, did you do a big enough deal for them to go after you? Mm. And... Like we know everything on these on these wallets, dude. This is so traceable. It's hard, but it's very easy to Illegal do. Illegal as in like money laundering. Uh, the whole thing, dude. Okay. Where the money came from, yeah. where it went to. They have access to all that now. Everybody uh, thought you know it was untraceable. They will never yeah. find me. Uh, now see, that was like, always a lot. That, that was always like such a bullshit, and, and nothing about an anonymity. Also, you know, the, the, the white paper talks about peer-to-peer -peer transactions. It did not say it was going to happen tomorrow morning. People read the white paper, and then they re-articulate that out and go, hey, hey, peer-to-peer, -peer, no intermediaries. Yeah, dude, but he didn't say it was going to happen the first day. Like, you're throwing, you're dubbing that shit in going, 2023. <laughs> well, the market's not even ready for that. Mm. So maybe 10 years from now, we're doing peer-to-peer. -peer. I've done probably more peer-to-peer -peer transactions than anybody I know in dollar value. Yeah. But it's for business. You know, owe somebody a million dollars, bash. Do it on Saturday afternoon. I move three and a half million dollars on Saturday afternoon, dude. Through Bitcoin. Do you know anyone in your life who's moved three and a half million dollars from five institutions on a Saturday afternoon at 2.30 while three major banks were going imploding. Just leave that last part out. Do you know anybody that's done three and a half minutes, 12 <laughs> no. minutes, dude?
Took me 12 minutes, $12. That, that was the cost. $12. Okay. And my guy, Node 40, he got it and within seconds moved to stable coins and it funded the investment I made in the company. That's a beautiful use case for Bitcoin. The movement of money freely. Well, the movement of large funds, okay, without an intermediary slowing the process down. Yeah. And on a Saturday. Bro, I'd be so scared I get the address wrong on that transaction. Uh, but, but it was so easy, dude. You, <laughs> you, you do a copy. I'm sending it a dollar. That worked. Repeat yes. the copy. Move it up to three and a half. It, 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 it was not. It was, look, look, this is what, look, listen, you're right. Okay, you slow down yep. and do it properly. But let's talk about what the option is. He was in my car a little while ago. He, he will tell you I am not the most. I'm a good driver, but like if you're in the passenger seat, you're probably like, man, this <laughs> motherfucker ain't paying attention to it. And he's going fast. Quick prayer. So um, let's say I try to do that in, 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 uh, through bb and I'm driving down the road. I, I'm going to wake up in the morning. <sighs> Wire from XYZ account to this account, three and a half million dollars. First off, I got to get all the money in one central place. Got to call one human being, send the email, then they call me back. Is this Gary? No, nah, this is Bob, dude. Like, <laughs> of course, it's of course Gary. you just called my phone number, right? <laughs> this is Gary. Uh, send, I'm going to send you a code. They send me a code. How much money? I'm driving down the road, dude, 110 miles an hour. What's the short code? Yeah, that sounds right. What's the account <laughs> routing number? That sounds right. Good, thank you. That's not security. Okay, that's so insecure. I'm probably going to get in a wreck or make them, a, and then they ping me a little authorization thing, and then I ping them back, say, hey, that's good. Then they send me an email. Uh, 45 minutes later, okay? So was that really secure? And what's the fee on that? Like that, the 35 bucks and an hour. See, the hour bugs me more than 35 bucks. Yeah. 35 bucks is just, that's rude. Okay? That's rude. That's just rude, but <laughs> I don't really care about the 35 bucks, but the hour, bro. Yeah. And, and they're literally going, hey, this is security. This is not security. This is bullshit. Yeah. Like, this is just you checking the box saying, Gary is never going to be able to sue me. Mm. And that's the reason that most people will not self-custody, okay? Because real money wants to sue somebody. And when you're self custody in Bitcoin, there isn't anybody to sue. So I'm, dude, corporates, <laughs> corporates are never going to hold this shit. They want someone to sue. So they're going to go to Fidelity and go, hey, Fidelity, here's half a billion dollars in Bitcoin. I can hold it. Dude. And if you mess it up, we're going to sue you. <laughs> and that's the way the world will work. I mean, for certain. And it'll only be very in individual people that'll do this. It, it's, it's the big players. Well, or the edge players, the guys that want to go to El Salvador and they don't mm. want to deal with the government. And they want to be off the grid. See, this is my point to the, these guys. Like, hey, you're talking about in order for you to get the Bitcoin standard as quickly as possible, we have to go to Mad Max. Yeah. That's the only way we get there in the next two years where everyone is self-custody. The price of Bitcoin will be shit. Our lives will be shit. Okay, let's say Bitcoin's worth a billion dollars. I think it'll be worth 10, not a billion, but who cares? I own 500 Bitcoin and I'm in a Mad Max event. Mm. Isn't this awesome? <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck about Bitcoin at that point. I want to yeah. know how many ARs I got. Yeah. Okay, how many, why didn't I buy some of those 240s and why don't I have any hand grenades? <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not going to be worried about yeah. money. So um, you want, yeah, I think the, the difference is Bitcoiners want a high price, but they want it at a cost to the point where Bitcoin doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. But we want it at a price where it's like institutions are managing it. So it's like in a reality where Bitcoin's advantageous because you're rich and it's a good life and not the end of the world. Well, yeah. And that, like if, if you want Bitcoin to become a standard, you have to have adoption. Yeah. Like, so you can't pick and choose who's going to. Now, none of, the, none of what they're doing is going to work anyway because it's, uh, it's not about the U.S., so that's really, the, to yeah. me, the beautiful thing is the U.S. I would like the U.S. to, to, to outlaw this. I, I would love that. I think it would be the best thing that could happen to me is that if they outlaw Bitcoin, the price will go up about 300%, and uh, nobody in the, no one on the rest of the planet will care. And we'll just keep going, man. Yeah. And that's really problematic for politicians in the U.S. because they have been in control of they know. every industry on the planet Except for the last this. 70 years.
Hey guys, if you enjoyed this short clip, check out the full interview here. And if you want to see more clips from this episode, check it out right here.